And what I want you to do is create a three generation pedigree. And it's pretty simple. You don't have to write this down right now. I want you just to look and listen. But in a pedigree, we document our families. And so this is the, these are my grandparents on the barn side. And these are my grandparents on my mom's side, the Darvisons. <clears throat> the Barneses had four boys. And so I'm drawing squares to represent males. Also, the line between two people indicates that these people are reproductive partners. The Darbisons had four children as well, one boy and three girls. And my dad uh, married the youngest Darbison girl and had three children. And here I am. And then here's one of my sisters. And then here is my other sister. It's kind of funny eyes. That'll work. Ladies, two ladies. And you don't have to put smiley faces on your pedigree. That's probably not part of the deal. I'm just doing that because it's my flavor right at this moment. Now, all I'm asking you to do is just track one health trait, really, is ideally what you would do. But for me, since, I, since there are a lot of my relatives that I don't really necessarily want to bust out their health issues on YouTube, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just show Thomas. So the people that have the, the color red are going to be taller than normal. I did look this up, that 5 foot 10 is normal height for an American male. And about five foot four, four and a half is the normal height for a female. So, <clears throat> my Granny Darbison was a tall lady. She was probably five nine or five ten, I think. I might be making that up. I just know she was kind of tall. My uncle and two of my aunts are very tall people. My Grandpa Barnes was a tall man, and my dad was a tall man and one of his brothers was tall. And most everybody else on this picture, I would say, is average in height. Uh, my grandma Barnes actually was shorter than normal. My, my grandpa, Bud Darbison, he was average. My mom was either average or shorter. I don't know the answer in this child, and I'll tell you, that, tell you in a minute. Uh, this uncle is average. Uh, I and my two sisters are all average in height. So that's it. That's really the, the task that I'm asking you to do. And I think it would be more meaningful if you track something like cancer or cardiovascular or something that has to do with health. If you don't have any health problems in your family, great. Uh, track something different like this. Eye color, glasses, baldness, do something. This, uh, you would just attach this to your test and turn it in with the test. Now, what you can also do is document all of those deceased. So all of the people that I have marked a line through are deceased. Now, here is an interesting story. This person right here was a male. My grandma went to visit my grandpa in San Diego when he was in the Navy in World War II. This baby was born, and it lived about three weeks and then passed, died. And it is in a graveyard somewhere in San Diego, California, all by itself. If that child, if the sex had been unknown, if this had been a miscarriage, or then this is what we put for sex unknown. In the case of this little boy, it, he, he was named James Monroe, and he did pass. So I will just use a regular symbol to show him. And, I, and, and as far as the trait, I, I can't know because he was a little child, infant, when he passed. Now, let's talk about some other possibilities. What if my uncle had been adopted? Then there would be a dotted line to indicate adoption. What if my uncle had been a twin? Then there would be a single line with a split 
and that would show identical twins right there. Single egg fertilized by a single sperm that then split into two identical. What if the, the he was a fraternal twin? Then he would just have a separate origin off of this crane's foot just like the other brother would have. That's how you would do that. Half, not, I'm sorry, not half brothers, but in this case, fraternal twins. Somebody did ask me that in previous classes. What about half brothers and half sisters and all that? I think for this, this pedigree that you're doing, just keep it simple and try to keep everybody that's in the line with you that's going to make it as easy as possible. And I obviously, maybe not obviously, but I don't know about your family, so I'm not looking on your test and, you know, checking this out and making sure you did it, you know. Yeah. He said 12 children. I know there's only 11 in that family. No, I'm not trying to do that. I'm, it, I'm not going to check it. I just want you to do it. And here's, some, here's a thought that I have. You know, earlier I had written, well, what if... What if there was an adoption? I think this is a legitimate thing, and I think this is a good idea. If if you if a person is adopted, then a family tree like this is not quite as useful. And so I think it would be important. Maybe it would a person could download a health history form off of the internet, mm -hmm. send it to this parent with a self-addressed self-stamp envelope, and say, "Would you please tell me about your health?" problems and how you've dealt with them so that I can know how to face these in my life. I think that's a legitimate request. And you may not, you may or may not get an answer back. Don't know. And you may not get an answer back from that person. You might wind up getting an answer back from someone who's a family member who filled it out for them. But anything, any information is better than nothing if, if there's an adoption or something like that. Now, I don't want to discount the family that, that a person lives with. If a, fam if a person is adopted, I know that some part of their health is going to be affected by the host family because their eating habits are going to be affecting you.